Welcome to Midtown Concerts. I'm Christina Conroy in the Church of the Transfiguration, the beautiful little church around the corner in New York City. Now, the Empire Vials were scheduled to perform today, but a positive COVID test caused them to cancel. Fortunately, a wonderful musician was available at a moment's notice, and today we are presenting The Devil's Violin. Edson Scheid plays Paganini. Now, Edson is playing a period violin with real gut strings, and I personally am very excited because I wasn't expecting to hear him until next season when he was going to be playing half of the 24 a Capricci per Violino Solo Opus 1 of Niccolò Paganini. But since he's here today, we get 11 of the Capricci today, and we will get the remainder 13 next season. The uh, wonderful program notes and the printed program are available on our website, www.gemsny.org. So now, please enjoy The Devil's Violin. Thank you. 
Hello everyone, thank you very much for being here this afternoon. Please let me know if I'm speaking loud enough. Let me know if not. Okay, um, as you can see, these caprices are very virtuosic. 
which means one has to spend some time in the practice room. <laughs> um, so Paganini was by far the most famous violinist of the 19th century. The expression to be the Paganini of, some, of something or of somewhere kept being used even into the 20th century. There was a violinist called Karol Lipinski. He was the Paganini of Poland. There was a violinist called Ole Bu. He was the Paganini of Norway. And even in Brazil, where I'm from, South America, Flauzino Valley was called the Brazilian Paganini. So this expression has traveled around. Um, because the, Paganini, the name Paganini has been associated with a certain level of excellence um, and a certain dose of craziness too. Um, so why is that? It's because his uh, performances created a big impact in his audience. Um, he was known for his personal magnetism and virtuosic technique. Famously, the pianist Franz Liszt, upon hearing a concert with Paganini, decided to bring to the piano what Paganini did on the violin. Robert Schumann decided to pursue a career in music after attending a performance by Paganini. And if I may tell, uh, there is a story about Franz Schubert, the famous composer. He didn't have any money at the end of his life in Vienna in 1828, and his friends put together a fundraiser to help him out. And upon receiving the money, what did he do? He invited the friends to hear Paganini. That's the way to spend. So it's a sign of the, how big of a deal a Paganini performance was. Um, the 24 Caprices are his most famous composition. As you just heard, the three first Caprices I played, very virtuosic. There is another side to Paganini, though, um, lyrical side, uh, singing kind of writing as well. Rossini, famous opera composer, bel canto composer, who was a friend of Paganini, said that if Paganini had chosen to be an opera composer, other composers from the time would be out of a job uh, because uh, he was that good when writing in an operatic style. And Schubert, after hearing the concert, said, a concert by Paganini in Vienna, he said, it's as if I had heard an angel sing. So we don't think of angels when you think of Paganini, but there was this side to him as well. The next two caprices I'm about to play, caprice number six and 11, particularly number 11, they show a little bit of this singing style of Paganini, more number 11 than number six. So here are caprices six and 11. Thank you. 
Some of the caprices acquired nicknames because of their popularity. So I'm about to play now Caprice 13, 14, 15, and 16. 13 has a nickname. It's called the Devil's Laughter. There are two reasons for this. The first obvious reason is the beginning of this Caprice sounds like somebody's laughing. The other reason, the devils. Why the devil? There were rumors that Paganini had a pact with the devil. This was, of course, an attempt to explain how he played the violin the way he did. Now, it's interesting to notice that Paganini never worked really hard to dismiss those rumors. He was very much aware of publicity material and marketing tools. So uh, he was thinking in that way as well. Although this nickname of the Caprice are not by him. Um, so the devil's laughter. Caprice number 13, number 14, the march, because of the rhythmic pattern. And uh, 15 and 16 don't have nicknames. But I would like to say about number 16, I would like to point out the creative use of accents, which means uh, you em emphasizing certain notes more than others. Paganini uses accents in a way in, that is unpredictable, showing his sense of humor. So here are the next four caprices of the program.
For the last two caprices for the day, caprice is number 20 and 24. Caprice number 20 also has a nickname, pastoral, because the opening imitates the sound of a bagpipe. Caprice number 24 is the most famous of them all. Uh, it's a theme and variations. So many composers have written pieces using that theme, most famously Sergei Rachmaninoff in his uh, Rhapsody on a theme of Paganini for piano and orchestra. Thank you again, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Jean, Murrow, Cheng, thank you, John Thiessen. And I, I, I want to mention this, I see two people here that I know that were 
teachers at Juilliard School. When I was a student there, I see Robert Mealy and Cynthia Roberts. I want to mention their names that they are here as well. So thank you, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the rest, uh, the remaining two caprices.
You have heard the Paganini of Brazil, Edson <laughs> Edson has recorded all of the Paganini Caprices on this CD. They're available at the back of the hall for just $15, and I will provide many hours of listening pleasure, I'm sure. I'm Gene Morrow, the executive director of Gotham Early Music Scene, who produces these free concerts with the support of all of you who've donated 
as well as the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, the New York State Department, New York State Council on the Arts, and the Howard Gilman Foundation. So thanks to all of them for making amazing performances like this possible. Next week, have, we have the Bach Ensemble in New York, a wonderful Baroque quartet, young players, recent graduates from Juilliard, doing a wonderful mixture of Baroque uh, music for small ensemble. So thank you all for coming, and we'll see you again next Thursday at 1.15. Thank you.